Hello you wonderful people and welcome to Unraveled, where we take gorgeous geekery and turn it into questionable crafts. Oh wise and ancient Pokemon masters, which Pokemon shall we be crocheting today? Wait, I can see something. It's Mew! So let's draw it out. Mew boils down to three spheres, small, bigger and biggest, to use the technical term, like a snowman but in the wrong order. And I found this lovely pink yarn which seems just as eager to get started as I am, so without further faffing, let's crochet! The head is usually where I start, as I use the head as a scale for the rest of Mew, and with Steve, my regular partner in crochet, and a magic ring is our modus operandi. Six stitches into a magic ring and a Pokemon is born! I'm still a bit unused to crocheting smaller again after my whopping great side up project, but I'll soon get into the swing of things again. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Stay to the end for more news about my next life size Pokemon project. Mew's head is the middle size sphere of snowman anatomy, and spheres mean increases. Increasing six times in every round until, yeah, it is about right. And that turned out to be five increase rounds. Oops, Steve, what happened? Are you alright? I'm sure you'll be fine, you just lay there for a second. Mew's body will be one and a half heads long, and I thought the scale wouldn't be too fiddly. Oh dear, was I wrong. After the increase rounds, we then need to double crochet straight for a certain number of rounds. This is usually one more than the amount of increase rounds that we did. Before we get to stuffing, I need to decrease for a few rounds as well, so that the forbidden candy floss will stay put. The number of decrease rounds will be the same as the number of increases that we did, but I need to stuff at some point, so I will leave a little gap so I can still get my finger in there. Invisible decreases are the way to go. Six times in every round as we increased. At the stuffing stage, I like to stick the live stitch on my finger so that it makes it a bit easier. Steve can take a little bit of a break whilst we stuff me full of sugar. Mew's head will be stuffed with as much forbidden candy floss as is humanly possible to even out all the lumps and bumps in my crochet. Sorry Steve, breaks over. Mew's neck is quite narrow so I'm closing the head sphere completely. It's a bit tricky because this yarn likes to split but we get there in the end. Oh Steve, what do you like? You're falling apart at the seams. Pierre, you've had first aid training, come and help Steve. Don't worry Steve, Pierre will know what to do. So while Steve's getting patched up, that's Mew's head done. The eagle-eyed in the audience will have noticed that Mew's head isn't actually spherical, but kind of like a pyramid. To turn Mew's head from a sphere into some kind of everlasting gobstopper, I've crocheted five cones that will be sewn onto the head later. These are the two pointy ones that I've made for Mew's ears, and come to think of it, it kind of looks like I've made a pink princess layer. <laughs> Next up is Mew's body, and the two spheres that make up the snowman's semblance will be crocheted together as one. Starting with a magic ring, which I'm sure you don't need to see again, so let's skip through this. Fast forward, come on, a bit faster, a bit faster. <laughs> the biggest sphere is the bottom of Mew's body, and this is crocheted in exactly the same way as the head, except that we are going to make it a little bit bigger. To cinch in Mew's waist, we decrease a little bit before we start work on the smallest sphere of all. Oops, Steve appears to be recovered enough to be blowing bubblegum bubbles. Mew's upper body is just a couple of increases before we can then start to decrease in alternate rounds to create a thin neck. Uh oh, it's looking a tiny bit not safe for work. Better censor it just in case. <laughs> I rummaged around the cupboard and found some more fluffy stuff to stuff the body with. And now it's looking more like a peanut and less like the other P word. <laughs> now we can decrease in alternate rounds, we can do a decrease round and then a straight round so that we can taper slowly up to a thinner neck. And hey presto, just like that we have a finished body. 
Maybe it looks a bit more like a hot air balloon, actually. <laughs> now we're getting to the most difficult bit of Mew of all, its tail. In terms of crochet, it's pretty simple. It's a leaf-shaped cone on top of a really, really long, thin, taily bit. So long, the tail's almost twice as long as the body. And here is where I also started to regret not making Mew at a larger scale. To get the long, thin, taily bit to the right width, I need to crochet the same four or five stitches around and around and around. <laughs> And for every round I was fighting constantly to keep the same amount of stitches, not to increase, not to decrease, and to also, most importantly, not catch the other side of the stitches and close the cone completely. And here's where the plan changed. I now have a finished tail and I thought, well that's a bit flat and lifeless. Wouldn't it be really cool if I could get the tail to twist and bend and hold its own weight? So I got myself some wire to thread into the tail. The wire was a bit thinner than I needed, so I unraveled twice as long as length of wire as the tail is long. <laughs> Try saying that three times. I then twisted the two pieces of wire together so that they would act as one piece of wire. Slightly hampered by the fact that I've never actually made anything with wire before, so it took me a while to figure out the right technique to get this done bloody quicker than I was doing it. So now the wire's done and the sharp ends are folded away, can you see the flaw in my plan? <laughs> yep, at some point I had managed to crochet the tube closed and I could not, for the life of me, get the wire into the tail apart from more than halfway. Well, every mistake is an opportunity to learn, so I decided to thread in some yarn into a needle and then into the wire, which I could then thread through the tail and hopefully be able to pull the wire through from the other side instead of trying to push it because it was far too bendy for pushing. <laughs> it took some persuasion to say the least. The wire's now most of the way in the tail, but it got stuck again right before it got into the leaf end of it, so I decided to cut my losses, literally. And it only took a little bit more wire work to make sure the last little bit poking out of the tail wasn't too long, and I can poke it through the body later to make a poseable tail. Finally, we have all the pieces of an ancient Mew puzzle. A head, two ears, two cheeks, two cylindric arms, two ovular upper legs, two tubular feet, and one slightly stretched tail. Oh, and a snout too. Mew's lovely mousy face needs some big cute eyes. They're too small to crochet and I'm not that great at crocheting flat anyway, so they're being embroidered. I've sewn one already and the trick is to try and get them symmetrical, which I'm also not very good at. But I guess practice makes eyes. The outline is done first in black as a guideline and then the middle is filled with a light blue, a dark blue and then white. To make the outline then stand out again I went over it again in black. I tried to keep the embroidery threads all running in the same direction so that it doesn't look like a tangled mess. Now with the eyes done it's just a matter of sewing the whole lot together. Thank you so much for watching, as frustratingly fiddly as some of making Mew was, it was still really fun. <laughs> Seeing as Psyduck is now my most liked video so far, I'm guessing you would like to see more life-size projects. So I've got some good news, my next life-size project is currently in the works. I post regular updates in the community area so you can see the progress of this life-size Pokemon performer. So that's it for me, whether you're a girl, a guy, non-binary, hi, or just passing by, I'm so glad you're here. And I'll see you next time for more Unraveled Chaos. Oh, poor Steve, what do you like? Come on now, let's put you back together. Oh, oh, ah, there we go.